Welcome to another edition of the CS Podcast, where you can hear interviews with special guests such as Dayon Buchanan, Tom Waddle, Pierre Desir, Brent Barry, Ed Werder, and many others. Too big, too strong, too fast, too good. So be sure to subscribe and tune in to the CS Podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash christianre722. Did you not get the memo? That's www.youtube.com slash christianre722. For great interviews, be sure to check out the CS Podcast. You are ridiculous! Welcome back to the CS Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Shanafel, and I'm now joined by 2016 NFL Draft prospect. He won't be entering this year's draft, but uh, definitely be on the lookout for him next year. Outside linebacker out of the University of Mary, Grant Singer. Grant, thank you very much for taking some time this morning. How's it going? It's going good. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Let's go ahead and get right to it. I just want to start this interview off by asking you a pretty simple question, and that is, coming out of high school, Grant, how did you decide to attend uh, little old University of Mary and play D2 football for the Marauders? Um, I guess to kind of, I come out of high school, you know, I had some offers, different schools, and uh, I decided to take a visit there. Uh, I really enjoyed the coaches. Um, they really made, made me feel at home, I guess, and um, I came home and kind of just discussed it with my parents, and another factor was it was only an hour away from my hometown, so then it was easy for me to come back and help out in the farm and stuff when I could, and so um, it just kind of felt like the right fit, and uh, yeah, I just decided it was a great opportunity to play Division Two there, and yeah, I just really enjoyed the coaching staff, and they made me feel welcome there, so. Now, I see that you actually had the opportunity to play right away. As a freshman, you played in 10 games, and you put up 46 tackles, 6 tackles for loss, 2 sacks, 2 fumble recoveries, and a forced fumble. Uh, When you committed to Mary, did you have any idea that you would have the opportunity to see the field as much as you did that first year of yours there? No, I don't think so. Um, You know, it was, you know, I did go through my redshirt year, but, um, but yeah, the next year, you know, I, I was just looking to kind of travel with the team and try to get a spot on the bus. But yeah, um, definitely not what I expected. Uh, and I was truly blessed to get to be able to have that opportunity in my life. And um, But yeah, like you said, I don't think it's something I expected. You know, I just wanted to be maybe on some special teams and stuff like that. But um, we had some injuries and I got an opportunity to start um, a couple games and it kind of just, it went from there, I guess. And I, yeah, I got thrown in pretty early. Well, obviously, you, you took advantage of that opportunity, and in 2012, as a sophomore, it seemed like you were able to uh, step your game up to another level. You've seen more and more uh, time on the field. You tallied 91 tackles, 14 tackles for loss, and six sacks. That set up what was probably your best season during your college career. As a junior, in 2013, you led the team with 118 tackles, 16 and a half tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks, three interceptions, three fumble recoveries, and one forced fumble. I mean, that's a hell of a stat line. Now, with all that being said, what were your expectations for this past season, uh, knowing that it'll be your final go around at the college level. Yeah, you know, I think, like you said, after my junior year, you know, I even just talked with some coaches that was going to be a hard year to um, to kind of surpass, you know, and, and do better than that. But um, I kind of just learned my senior year, trying not to think so much about the numbers and everything. But you know, you hear from a lot of players just to enjoy your last senior year of college, you know, with the guys that you're playing with and stuff. So I tried to go in with that mindset, but, you know, my goals, I'm a pretty determined guy, so, you know, I want to do as much as I could um, just for the team. But going into, I knew some teams were probably going to look at me and try to stop me more. So um, just do whatever I need to do for the team, whether that's making, you know, one tackle a game and we still get the win. That's kind of what my mindset was on is that, um, I wanted to make the playoffs, you know, and, and go from there. But, yeah, like you said, it was hard to hard to probably overcome that junior season. But just going in, I wanted to just enjoy that last season that I had in college. Well, this past season, Grant, it was a very solid year out of you. You were able to rack up 96 tackles, 8.5 tackles for loss, 8 pass deflections, 2 interceptions, and 2 fumble recoveries. Now, you only played in 8 games this past season, missing the last 3 due to a knee injury. You had some damage done to your ACL, MCL, and meniscus, and you're going to have to be going through uh, rehab on that knee for quite a while. i, I got to think you've already been rehabbing it for a couple months or so. Uh, how's the knee coming along? Yeah, it's coming along good. You know, I talked to the doctors the other day, and everything's 
going is planned. You know, the biggest thing is just patience. you got to have patience when you're going through this recovery. And motion's coming back well. Um, and so now it's just kind of, you know, slowly building it back up for the next six weeks. Got to do, you know, those little exercises before I can start lifting with it a little bit here. So it's going to start to feel good, they told me, but just uh, be patient and behave for myself for the most part. So I just have to make sure that I'm careful with it. But everything's going as planned, so that's the good thing. Yeah, definitely uh, great to hear. Now, how would you describe not only this past season, but your overall college football experience at the University of Mary? I know it didn't end the way you wanted it to. You guys didn't have a ton of team success throughout your time there, but individually, you were able to have a lot of you know individual success. Yeah, you know, I would say the, the thing that I take away from my four or five years there that I had is probably just the guys that I played with. Um, you know, you're going to remember that from the rest of your life and like the coaches I got to play for, um, and just the team aspect of it. You know, some of them guys, you know, I'm still in contact with and able to talk to, and some of them will probably be some of my best friends, you know, for the rest of my life. But um, individually, you know, I was very blessed with what. You know, with what I was able to do um, as a marauder, but you know, I think that takes away from some of the other guys that helped me out in those situations. You know, you gotta, it's a team aspect when it comes down to it, and I think it's the things that, you, that I did outside um, of football with those guys, whether it was, you know, having supper one night together or just meeting up, you know, and just having fun. I think those are the things that I'm gonna remember the most. Like you said, the team. I don't know if we had the greatest team success, but I think I'm going to just remember um, the guys that I was able to play with and just the relationship that I was able to build with them and hopefully last for uh, years beyond college. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Chris Shanfell talking to uh, Grant Singer, outside linebacker out of the University of Mary. And Grant, throughout your uh, entire college football career, who would you say is the best or most impressive player you've had to play against? Is there anybody specific out there? Oh, I can't remember. He was a running back for Winona Raymond. Is it Simmons, I think? I think that's what his name was. He held, he's a really good running back that I was able to play against um, when I was a sophomore, I believe. And I think he set the NSIC rushing record um, for our conference um, for all the years that he played. And he was just a really good exclusive back uh, for the most part. So I would say he was probably the... Uh, best player that I had to play against in my college, you know, career from another team. All right, sounds good. Now, if you had to single out one, uh, what's the biggest or most memorable play that you've made throughout these last four years as a Marauder? Oh, man, there's a lot of them. But I would um, I would have to say this last year. Um, no, I have two of them, actually. This, I'll go first from this last year, my senior year. Um, we were playing mine up there and, we were coming down um, on the five-yard line. We were up by two, and um, Seth Walton, the other outside linebacker, came off the edge and blitzed, and he ended up sacking um, the guy, and he ended up fumbling, and I saw the ball in front of me, and I just hopped on it, and, you know, the game was over. There was, like, I think 20 seconds left, so it was just one of the moments that your mindset just, uh, everything happened so quick. It went from, okay, we're probably going to have to block a field goal to win this game to, the ball's in front of me, and I got to recover it, um, and the game was over, you know, we won. So it was just, it was a very emotional game. There was a lot of ups and, ups and downs in it, and just for the game to end that way was um, pretty phenomenal. Hmm. I would say the other one would probably be um, against Duluth last year. Uh, I was able to uh, come off the edge, um, and one of the quarterback punt fake, and he got me to jump up. Um, I came back down, but I was able to still um, sack him on that. But, yeah, those are probably two of the most memorable ones I have. But there there have been many memorable plays oh, that I've had throughout my career at Mary that I can remember. Of. But those are just two that are um, at the top of my head that I can remember. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. I mean, it, it absolutely, you know, I, I've been rambling off stats, but I have indeed taken a look at some of your tape and highlights, and there are absolutely a bunch of uh, a bunch of plays that you have been uh, involved in. Uh, but I got to say, you, you really have jumped out on the screen uh, when, when I take a look at your tape, your highlight film, uh, whether it's shedding the blockers to get after a quarterback or running back in the backfield or uh, even covering the tight end or wide receiver down the field. I mean, I got to say, you, you really did impress me. Uh, what, what do you feel is your biggest strength as an outside linebacker? Oh, 
um, I think my lateral speed is what made me set me apart from, or just gave me, you know, that ability to just be able to move, like you said, not only just to stop the run, but um, just on pass plays as well, be able to run with receivers and um, be able to cover a lot of ground, I think, is what my biggest strength is and um, just kind of have that instinct for football. Um, you know, I grew up with it in my in my life since I was young, so I just think I've always had that instinct and that, that quickness and that speed right off the ball, and so I would just say the lateral speed of being able to cover a lot of the field is probably my biggest strength. The instinct for football, I, I like that. I, I got to say, I've never heard that before, but I, I think I'm probably going to be using that a lot uh, in the future, the instinct for football. Uh, what about a weakness? Is there anything specific that you'd like to improve on? Um, I think some people would say my, my size a little bit, you know. Um, I'm, I'm 6'1", you know, 225 this last year, but, um, you know, going into my junior year, I was only 215. So some people said my size was – there's maybe a little bit of weakness, but I was able to, you know, put on 10 pounds on the off season and do that. Um, and especially for the next level, some people, you know, might say my size is probably the biggest weakness I have um, in that. So. All right. Now, now, uh, Grant, I know that this knee injury has kind of delayed the process of yours, but uh, well, let's go ahead and say there is an NFL general manager listening to this very interview. Why should he want outside linebacker out of the University of Mary Grant Singer a part of his team? Um, I think I just have um, the heart for football, you know. I have the drive. I've always loved um, playing football my whole life. And I know that's what a lot of people say, but um, I work hard. Uh, I've always done that. I think I have that because I grew up on the farm um, as a young kid, and I just I, I was taught that, you know, you got to work for everything that's given to you. And so, um, you know, some people say I may not have the size, but, I think I make up for that heart and just the willingness to work as hard as I can. And, um, you know, I just love the game of football. <laughs> like as I said many times, it's something I've grown up with. And um, I think that, you know, if a GM is listening to this, that it, it's just, you know, I won't disappoint you in that sense of um, taking a chance on me. So. Well, uh, like you said, you have the instinct for football, you have the love for the game, and it definitely shows, so it's, uh, it seems like it's quite simple, uh, to say the least. Now, uh, once again, Chris Schanfeld talking to 2016 NFL draft prospect, not 2015, but he'll definitely be a name to look out for uh, in the future. Outside linebacker Grant Singer out of the University of Mary here on the CS Podcast. And Grant, just a few more questions, then I'll let you go. I really do appreciate your time. Now, if you would compare yourself to an outside linebacker currently playing in the NFL, who do you think that would be and why? Um, I, you know, some people have asked me this question a few times, and the guy that comes to my mind is just Chad Greenway, I think, for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, just because I think he plays, you know, that outside linebacker kind of position, and I've loved watching him play over the years. And I don't know, I think he can, I know he's bigger than, than I am right now, but um, he kind of just, I love seeing him out there play. Um, plays hard, he plays with passion. And um, that's something I think that I can relate to um, through him. And he plays that similar position that I think I'd like to play. So I would say uh, Chad Greenway is the guy that I I love to watch and um, kind of reminds me of myself a little bit. Hey, sounds good. Uh, definitely, uh, I would say one of the top linebackers in the NFL. I would also say probably one of the more underappreciative uh, players in the NFL as well. Uh, definitely an underrated guy out there, uh, Chad Greenway. Not not a bad one right there, I'll say that. Now, last but not least, Grant, here's a, here's a fun one to end the interview. Uh, it's quite simple. What's something about yourself that many people may not know? Oh, well, let's see. I, I don't know. I played basketball, I guess, in high school. Um, as well, and I don't know if many people know that. Everyone's always told me that, you know, basketball, that I maybe should have went to college and played that, but I think football was the right choice there. But, yeah, I guess growing up in high school, I played um, I played basketball, and then I did track and field as well. So, you know, a lot of people don't know. I don't think that I played basketball growing up as well and did track and field, and they thought I just did football. But I enjoyed all those sports. Um when I was in high school for the most part. So, yeah, I don't know. I was a multi-sport athlete, I guess. I don't know if some people know that or not, but I would say maybe that's the biggest thing.
Well, uh, that definitely sounds good now. Uh, so, so let's say two years from now you're in the NFL, you pick off, oh, I, I don't know, uh, Drew Brees, and you return it for a touchdown. Are you are you going to try to uh, dunk the ball through the uh, field goal post? <laughs> Probably not, because it'll be a 15-yard penalty from what, from what I know right now. But, uh, oh yeah, that would, that would be something cool if that did happen, but. I don't know, I'll have to work on some type of celebration. All right, team player, team player, you're always uh, thinking about that penalty that might come. Uh, sounds good. Uh, Grant, I really do appreciate your time, man. It was uh, definitely a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, once again, I'm wishing you nothing but the best throughout this process. I know it's been uh, delayed a little bit due to the knee injury, but uh, hopefully all that goes well. Um, before I let you go, is there anything else you have for us? No, I don't think so. You know, I just, I guess just to thank all the you know coaches and players I've played with, as I said earlier um, in the interview, that you know it's just been a pleasure to play with all the guys that I have at the University of Mary and the coaches that have gotten to coach me, and just the fans and the, the family members that have been there for me. Uh, and definitely, you know, God's gotten me through a lot, you know, and I I just praise Him and thank Him for everything that He's done for me, and just and you know, the knee injury isn't what I wanted or what I expected, but. I think we can always learn from things that happen in our lives, and I'm definitely learning a lot right now as I go through this process. And so it's just been, you know, a great college career. It's gone by fast, and um, I'm just hoping that, you know, maybe there's a there's a chance at the next level for me. So I thank you for taking the time to do this interview, too. So thanks, Chris. Hey, uh, Grant, once again, the pleasure was all mine. Uh, congratulations on a very successful college football career at the University of Mary. And once again, I'm wishing you nothing but the best. Hopefully we can keep in touch and, uh, you know, just take care, man, all right? All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Appreciate it.